Wisdom uninvested in labor is wasted. How do you turn nothing into something? Here's how you start. There's three steps to it. Number one, imagination. So imagination starts to change everything. Now, imagination is not tangible, but it is almost real. It's not real, but it's almost real. But it's hard to say that imagination is nothing, but it's nothing in terms of tangible. It's not tangible yet. And you always have to say yet. Imagination is not tangible yet but it is the beginning of turning nothing into something. It's the beginning of turning nothing into reality, imagination. So the hotel I'm staying in next door was once in someone's imagination. Imagination is the ability to see things that don't yet exist. The ability to see what does not yet exist. Imagination is real in the sense that it affects. It'll affect your behavior, it'll affect your enthusiasm, it'll affect your emotions. It's real in that sense, but it's not real in the tangible sense. But to turn nothing into something, you start with imagination. Next is faith. To believe that what you imagine is possible. How would we start to strengthen our belief in that what we imagine is possible to turn it into reality? And there's two or three ways. One is to believe your own testimony. If you've done it before, why couldn't you do it again? If you've done it once, couldn't you do it the second time? Why not believe in your own testimonial? If I did it before, I can do it again. I was rich by age 31 and broke by age 33. But now my question was, could I do it again? And the answer was, yes, of course. You know, I lost the money, but I didn't lose the skills. And that's what's important about personal development. You can lose the money, but not the skills. So who cares about the money? Unless it's getting late, right? And you're like 90 and you know, it's a little difficult to go back to the streets, but hey, once you've got the skills, you own the skills. It's like sales. A skill is more valuable than a sale. Someone, sometimes a salesperson says, I need a sale. I said, no, you need a skill. Sales are temporary, skills are permanent. So we start with imagination, which is almost real. I mean, it's, it's not real yet. It's not tangible yet, but it's almost real. Now we move to faith to believe that what we imagine is possible. So we study our own testimonial. If we've done it before, we can do it again. Here's what else we study. Other testimonials of somebody who did it. Somebody that built a hotel said, yes, I started with some plans and finally believed it was possible. And here it is. Say, well, if it's possible for one, it's possible for another. In fact, sometimes when we hear the testimonial, here's how they finish. If I can do it, you can do it. See, that that's a classic testimonial that gives us now what we call faith. And one of the ancient wise writers said, faith is generated by what we hear. Faith is generated by what we hear. The vocabulary of what we hear, the vocabulary of what we read, that generates faith to believe that it's possible. Now, faith is not reality. You can't say faith is nothing because it affects it's like radiation. To us, it's nothing because it can't be seen. But radiation is so powerful, it can kill you, right? You can't see it, but it has an incredible effect. And that's true of faith. Faith can't be seen, right? With the natural eye, it can't be seen, but it has an incredible effect on your attitude, on your behavior, on your disciplines, on your work for the day, and all the rest. So faith is tangible in that sense, that it affects the emotions, it affects the drive. But we still don't have a hotel. Even though the imagination is very powerful and even though faith is very real, we still don't have a hotel because faith is not a hotel. Now it's almost, it is so close. Here's what one writer described faith. Faith is a substance, a substance of hope. Now it's not a substance like a brick being a piece of the hotel, but it's almost, it's so close, it's substance. And it, the writer also said it's so close, it's evidence. Now not evidence you can see, but tangible evidence that's just as real as all of our human experiences that can't be touched, can't be seen. It's called the unseen magic. Language is the unseen magic. It can't be seen. The words can't be seen as they're transmitted from the speaker to the one who listens, but it can have a profound effect. That means it's more than nothing. Language is more than nothing, but to create something out of nothing, we start with imagination. Then we move to faith, which believes it's possible, which is almost real. I built my first home in, for my family in Idaho many, many years ago. And before I started this home to construct it, I used to take my friends out to the vacant property. And I would take them on a tour through this house. Do you believe that? I would say, this is the living room. It's got a fireplace here, it's brick. And then come around here into the family room, another fireplace, see through. On this side, it's stone, on this side, it's brick. I would walk them through the three-car garage. Isn't that true though? Faith and imagination is almost, it's called evidence and substance. Now it's still not tangible, but it's not far from tangible. But now here's what we do with faith and imagination. We deposit it in disciplines and activity. 
because faith without the activity serves no useful purpose. Imagination without the activity to translate it into reality serves no purpose. But wisdom and faith deposited in activity creates reality. The reality of a career, the reality of a hotel that wasn't there. Then this is a bit of a time management that will sort of translate into time management. Question goes like this, when should you start building the hotel that you've imagined and now believe that it's possible? When should you start? And here's the answer, as soon as you have it finished. You just got to remember that. You wouldn't start building a hotel unless you had it finished. Because if you start building something, somebody says, what's this going to look like? You say, I have no idea. See, they'd take you away to a safe place. No, the reason you start is because it's finished. So here's what we teach in time management. Don't start the day until you have it finished. You've got it laid out. Plenty of room for improvising, plenty of room for spontaneity, but you finish the day and then you start the day. You finish the week, then you start the week. But you shouldn't start building the hotel until you have it finished. Is it possible to finish it before you start? And the answer is yes. It would be foolish to start unless you had it finished. Unique things to remember. Now, here's what now turns wisdom and faith into reality, and that's activity, muscle the labor, the work. Some people go for affirmations, but see that, I do believe in affirmations, but here's the key on affirmations, and that is to affirm the truth. Affirm the truth. If you're broke, best thing to affirm is, I am broke. You put that up on the refrigerator where you can see it every day. It'll drive you to sign up for a class to learn a skill so that this doesn't happen anymore. Now, if that doesn't do it, uh, reaffirm and put this up there. I'm 40 and broke. That's a lot more alarming. And if that doesn't work, put this up there. I live in America and I'm 40 and I'm broke. Something is wrong. Not with the country now. You don't have to build a raft. You don't have to build a raft and go to another country. Something might be wrong with your philosophy, your policy, your plan, and your strategy. So affirm, yes, but always affirm the truth. Here's what the old prophet said. The truth will set you free. Truth to correct old errors in judgment. That's the freedom of the truth. Because if you don't speak the truth, then you're likely not to correct the errors in judgment. If something's wrong, but you say, hey, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. How are you going to correct the errors in judgment that made it wrong? See, you can't say it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, and finally it turns out to be fine. Say, no. The only way to go from wrong to fine is not by affirmation. The way to go from wrong to fine is to figure out where the errors in judgment were by speaking the truth. Something's wrong here. Finding out what's wrong, making the changes. Now it can go from wrong to fine. Here's a good phrase. Affirmation without discipline is the beginning of delusion. Now, here's what else the truth does. First, it sets you free to correct old errors in judgment. Here's what else it does. Helps you to set up new, easy disciplines to turn wrong into right, to turn lack into prosperity, to turn skepticism into faith. Now, let me give you the secret now to, to creating a hotel. The final secret is discipline. But in order to turn wrong into right, we must speak the truth because only the truth will set you free free to correct an error in judgment. Because here's the formula for failure and here's the formula for success. The formula for failure, number one, a few errors in judgment repeated every day. We call that the formula for failure. A few errors in judgment repeated every day. Now, why would you repeat an error in judgment the second day? Reason, failure doesn't occur at the end of the first day. If it did, it would be helpful because then you wouldn't do that anymore. But errors in judgment are so subtle because they don't usually show their results until for a while. But a few errors in judgment repeated every day, every day, every day, and sure enough, you're way off course. Now, here's all you got to do to turn that around. A few simple disciplines practiced every day, a few simple disciplines practiced every day starts to create success. Not at the end of the first day. The f
first day is the end of a new beginning, the first day. That you've started a new track, that you've started a new direction. So we must all speak the truth, so affirm the truth. Yes, affirm God is good. Yes, affirm life is full of possibility. Yes, affirm all the truthful possibility. But you don't need to try to trick yourself into saying something is okay when it isn't okay. Some people say every day in every way I'm getting better and better. And if that's not true, see, that, then that we call that delusion. If it's not true, if it is true, then it's wonderful, it's fabulous, we should celebrate. But if it's not true every day in every way I'm getting better and better, see, if that's not true, then it is an affirmation that's destructive. So just affirm the truth. The truth is I lack some skills to multiply my income by 10, which I wish to do in the future. I need to learn the skills. Affirm that you don't have the skills so that it'll drive you to get the skills because you want to multiply your income by 10. Yes, it is true. All things are possible to the believer. It is true. Errors in judgment lead to devastation. We don't just need the truth. We need the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Here's what we don't need. Delusion. You don't need delusion in order to try to make something out of nothing. All you need is this simple little formula to imagine because imagination is so powerful. It's the beginning of creating all things that we see. Then faith to believe it's possible. It says what? With faith, everything's possible. Without faith, nothing is possible. So that's a good study to make, creating faith to believe it's possible. But now we deposit faith and imagination into muscle, into discipline. Michelangelo was a genius, but it wasn't his genius that created this famous sculpture. But his genius was so strong and he believed in it so thoroughly that he picked up the chisel and the hammer. And it was the muscle and the chisel and the hammer that created the sculpture. And without the discipline, there would be no sculpture.